In the last video I put out, I did a bunch of tests to try to figure out which parts of the electric guitar are responsible for the tone, and people liked it. I did see some comments that had the word sustain in them, and the people who wrote these comments seemed very concerned about the thought of something affecting the guitar's sustain. I never really think about sustain, but I can see how it'd be a bummer if you wanted to play a note this long and your guitar was only capable of a note this long, so I'm as interested as you guys are in figuring out where the sustain comes from. Since you guys think about sustain more than me, I asked for some examples of good sustain and put together this list of songs where long notes are held out and people like it. But there are a couple wrinkles thrown in. U2 apparently used a special guitar that had a device that lets it ring forever, so that doesn't really count. And the rest of the examples sound to me like they use amp feedback. Feedback is when the amp is so loud in the room that the air shakes the strings and the note just keeps going. Maybe some guitars are more capable of feedback than others. Maybe some can't do it at all. I don't know. But I have four guitars and an amp that gets pretty loud, so let's see how loud it needs to be for each guitar to get feedback going. So that might be the sound in your head when you think guitar sustain, but then again it might not, so there are more tests to be done that don't involve the guitar getting help from the amp feedback. I'll start with a simple test where I strum each guitar and see how long it rings. Every guitar plugged in rang for more than 35 seconds, and I don't think I've ever played a 35 second long note before, so it'd be a good idea to figure out how many seconds I actually need to be able to get out of a guitar. The longest note in a song that I usually play is called a diamond, which means you hit it and hold it out for a whole bar. The slowest songs that I've played are around 60 beats per minute, which means 4 seconds per bar, so I'm thinking 4 seconds is about as long a note as I'll ever need to play, especially without feedback helping. You might not think that 4 seconds is a long time, but here's what a 4 second long note sounds like in music. So instead of saying this guitar sustains for 35 seconds, I bet what most people are looking for is the quality of sustain in those first 4 seconds. And the best way I can think of to test this is to strum a guitar and measure the peak volume at the start of the note and then measure the peak volume at 4 seconds and see how much it drops during that time. The less the volume drops, the better sustain the guitar has. But there are so many ways to strum a guitar. If I did this, I'd have to do this for all four guitars, doing an open strum versus just the low E string versus just the high E string, strumming normal versus hard versus soft, strumming normal versus near the bridge versus near the neck, strumming with a pick versus with a finger, and then doing this direct and then into a low gain amp and into a high gain amp. So that's four times three times six times three equals 216 different strums that I'd have to do, all measured at zero seconds and at four seconds and taking the difference, meaning 648 different pieces of data. So I did that and here's my spreadsheet. I've never taken a statistics class, so I don't know all the right words for looking at this and turning it into something useful, but I'll point out some trends that I see. First off, the strum and low E note were pretty close to each other in every test, but the high E note always had significantly less sustain. Another thing you can see here is how much better each guitar sustained when played into a low gain amp instead of just direct into the computer and completely clean, and then each guitar sustained even better than that when played into a high gain amp. Also, and this is kind of a big one, when played direct, every guitar had more sustain when played soft, but when played into either the low or high gain amp, every guitar had more sustain when played hard. That's weird, right? How can a hard strum sustain less than a soft strum? Then when put through an amp, it flip flops. If an amp is distorting at all, it's chopping the tops and bottoms off the wave, so the difference between the loudest parts and quietest parts is less than before, so we hear this as better sustain, because the volume isn't dropping off as much. The harder you hit an amp, the more intensely this happens. So this makes me think, if you're playing into an amp that's at least on the edge of breakup, the sustain you get is more determined by how loud a signal's going into the amp versus whether you're playing a Tele or an SG or a Gretsch or whatever. At least that's what the numbers make it look like. 
I'll put this spreadsheet up on my website so you can see for yourself. If you comb through the numbers and find any other interesting trends, let me know. But I'm not done yet. Even if sustain does mostly come from the amp settings and the output level of the guitar, my four guitars did perform differently. And there's a lot of things that I've heard people say affect sustain on an electric guitar, so I'm still interested in testing them. Break angle is how steeply the string drops off after the nutter bridge, and I've heard people say that a steeper break angle increases sustain, and a shallower break angle can rob your guitar of sustain. But these guitars have break angles all over the place, and come to think of it, what's the break angle of a fretted note? But I can try to test this. Let's see how shallow of a break angle is needed to start robbing sustain. I've heard a lot of people say that saddle material affects sustain because different ways of manufacturing steel produces different hardnesses and sometimes different metals are used like brass which would be softer than steel or sometimes it's one metal plated with another kind of metal so before I go out and buy all 30 something different types of saddle alloy I'm just going to shoot for the limits and say that any metal saddle versus any other metal saddle is going to make less of a difference than this metal saddle and this wooden dowel. What about string tension? I can tune a guitar down a whole step to make the strings looser, and then tune it up a whole step to make the strings tighter. When I was a kid, one of my favorite players said in an interview that he thought that Esquires were a little more alive and sustained a little more than Telecasters because Esquires don't have a neck pickup, and that having a neck pickup means the magnetic field sucks the strings down and doesn't let them ring as freely. So I took this neck pickup with a bar magnet on the bottom, got that magnet as close to the strings as possible without touching, and strummed eight times. Then I removed the pickup and strummed eight more times. My last video had an air guitar where I anchored the bridge into a bench and the headstock into a shelf propped up on chairs with motorcycle engines holding it down and 2x4s for bracing. A couple people seem to think that the mass of the bench and the shelf and even the engines act as the body and the neck of the guitar and that is what's giving the guitar sustain. Okay. So if being physically pressed against large pieces of plywood covered in motor oil can increase sustain, then maybe it's possible that putting a guitar on top of a soft mattress that does not resonate versus a guitar being pressed against a heavy hardwood dresser that does resonate would make a difference. Finally, the finish. It's sometimes talked about as the make or break factor in a guitar sustain, but I don't know anything about it, so I'll repeat some things I've read and heard. 
A lighter telly has better sustain and tone because the guitar is less dense and therefore more resonant. A heavier Les Paul has better sustain and tone because the guitar is more dense and therefore more resonant. A harder finish has better sustain and tone because it reflects the resonance back into the body and strings instead of absorbing the resonance like a soft finish would. And a thinner finish has better sustain and tone because it lets the wood breathe and resonate more, whereas a thicker finish would deaden the guitar and not let it vibrate. So it seems like more finish is bad, softer finish is bad, and heavier might be good or lighter might be good as long as the change in weight causes the guitar to resonate more. I think I know how to test this. This is tight bond wood glue. It is the most non-musical substance I can think of. It's gooey and dries plasticky. I cannot picture this material successfully transmitting or reflecting vibrations as effectively as any wood or any finish on any guitar. I picture vibrations running into it and getting absorbed into a black hole of dead tone. So I'm hoping that this test shows the maximum amount that the finish can affect an electric guitar's sustain and tone. So where does sustain come from in an electric guitar then? I've tested a bunch of things that I've been told affect sustain, and a lot of them only have a few dB difference, and the strongest evidence I have has to do with the amp. But there have to be some things about the guitar itself that make a substantial difference that anyone can hear, and explains why people think that some guitars have good sustain and others don't, right? And that's everything I know about what affects guitar sustain. Thanks for the inspiration, guys. And hopefully you'll join me for future tests.